Hey guys, welcome back to Genius Learning. All right, so this particular problem kind of upsets me, but it's an easy one and a lot of students have a problem with it because of um, certain things that are included in the information. So let's look, we have a cliff, right? Nine meters high above a ledge, which is 1.75 uh, meters. And then you have water. Okay, you have this uh, diver running in a velocity initial, right? And so if you're given velocity initial and you're running like this, you should know that this velocity initial is in the X direction, okay? Not in the Y, so there's no component, just, uh, just the X. Something to see when you're looking at the problem. So that's the setup. So anyway, I'm gonna read what they wrote and I stopped writing because this is the part that I just wanted to show. So it says a daring 510 Newton swimmer dives off um, a cliff with a running horizontal leap. Um, and then the next part is the question. So right there, me, when I see things, I try to write things down, you know, I'm putting mass of this person. This information is not gonna be needed to answer any of the questions that they give. So this is like um, putting, you know, a little booby trap in the problem to kind of throw people off. It's an easy one, but doing things like this makes it kind of, you know, let's see who knows or who's doing what. And if you're a little lost or like you're lost, using this in the equations will show that you are very lost in this problem. So I don't like that technique. It's kind of, you know, just don't give me what I don't need. But anyway, let's use let's use the rest of it. So it says a daring 510 Newton swimmer dives off a cliff with a horizontal leap. So that's a key word. Horizontal leap means that, so let's write that here because that's important. Horizontal leap. So if you see these words, right, you immediately know that that velocity initial is actually velocity initial in the X. Okay, because it's a horizontal leap. So you have no velocity initial in the Y. So we already deduced that. Now let's keep going. What must the minimum speed be just as they leave the cliff so that they will miss the ledge on the bottom? So what velocity initial minimum, again, that word minimum, do they need in order to clear the cliff? And it's weird because I would definitely want the maximum or like a, you know, definitely not the minimum. I don't really want to land right there, but that's what we're going to calculate for this daring person. Okay. So minimum. Okay. That word um, should be stuck to your head because it's going to mean that we're going to use this value right here. 1.75 because this literally is the minimum. Any less than that, you're going to hit the ledge. Okay, so they want right here. So minimum, this should have been like present in your mind. All right, I'm gonna draw a little diagram just to kind of clear some of the things up. We have uh, this, which is H, right? That's uh, this part right here. And then here we have X, that's this part right here. And we are launching horizontally okay and then we want to fall right there like little safe humans in the water right at the edge right the minimum value that's what they want all right so this h is nine meters so we could just write nine meters here and this x right here is 1.75 okay so x equals 1.75 meters so just to clear it up from there to here all right, nothing, no, nothing has changed, done nothing. So now this part here, horizontal leap, means that automatically I'm just gonna write V initial in the Y is equal to zero. Okay, because he's running, he's running horizontally or she's running horizontally. And now I wanna clear a distance right here and I know this uh, number, which is horizontal, and I know this number, which is um, vertical. So, 
you know, if I didn't know any better, let's just write down two equations that I could possibly use for those problems, okay? So again, right from the beginning, we are trying to find the minimum velocity needed to clear the ledge. So we want to know the uh, initial in the X, right? Because that's the, that's the velocity that we're running with minimum, so question mark. But we want the minimum velocity initial in the X. So this is what like our goal is. So not to lose track of the goal. All right, so now going back now, we know that this is zero and we have this information, this information. Let's write, I would write two equations down that could possibly show us what to do next. So I'm gonna write um, displacement in the Y. So Y2 minus Y1 is equal to velocity initial in the Y times time minus one half G T squared. So let's write this one down and then Let's also write displacement in the X is equal to uh, velocity initial in the X times time. I should have probably wrote X2 minus X1, but whatever. Let's look at these two and see what we have, what we don't have, and what we need. We definitely don't have time. So now again, um, so from the previous problems, usually like we have, we're missing the time value. Okay, so before I even start with either one of them, let's look at if we can fill in these values or eliminate some, all right? Because we know this is zero, and so now we know this is zero, and the y2, y1. So y1 is where we started from. We know that's nine meters, all right? And y2 is gonna be zero because that's gonna be you know, on the ground. So this is gonna be zero. Okay, so let's, let's solve. Um, let's see, let's solve for time from this, uh, this equation here. So what we have left is negative y1 is equal to negative one half g t squared. All right, I'm gonna get rid of the negatives. All right, so pass the two over, divide by G, and then square root everything. And I'm gonna get T is equal to two H over G. Okay, I'm gonna hold on to that, right? And, oh no, I have the values for all these, perfect. So applying the things that we know, right? from the initial information, we're able to cancel some things out and get the time needed for this fall right here, right? It's specific because the height or the y, the y1, which I changed to h, I don't know why, but this h and this y1 is the same thing. Oh, this y, because I put it here. So this h and y1, where we started at is the same thing. I'm gonna put, um, T is equal to square root of two, and in parentheses, the Y1 is nine, and then 9.8 is G, all right? And then that's gonna give us time is equal to 1.36 seconds. So that person has 1.36 seconds before they reach this level, this ground level here. Okay, and that's gonna be useful information because now we know when he when they jump, so they're gonna jump and they got 1.36 seconds at least to hit this ground level. Now we need to know how, what's the minimum velocity it's gonna take for him to clear 1.75 for the swimmer to, jump right here to this ledge. Okay, so we're gonna take this information given to us and we're gonna put it into this equation. Because remember, our main goal or like the end game 
was to get the velocity initial in the X minimum that's gonna allow us to clear this ledge. So we already have velocity initial in the X here, right? We don't know it yet, but we do know the time because we just found it. And we do know the minimum X, the minimum displacement that we need, which is 1.75. Like we don't want to hit it, so we need to at least clear it. So it's perfect. All right, from here, now we put uh, 1.75 for this. I'm gonna divide by T, so that means dividing by 1.36. And our velocity initial in the X minimum that we're gonna need to clear this much meters in this many seconds is gonna be V initial in the X equals 1.29 meters per second all right so this this problem is relatively straightforward I mean it has its little you know it's little things but this right here you know it's little snakes you know they want to get you throw you off a little bit and you know tell you the truth when I read stuff I just write the formula to write stuff down so you know it probably got me the first time I read it but definitely easier than what it what it seems at first, All right? Hopefully that helped. Thank you for watching.